It's seven in the morning in Majenga in the north of Madagascar. The first task of the day for all Madagascans is to kindle the charcoal in readiness for breakfast. Charcoal is black gold for Madagascans as it is for all sub-Saharan Africans. Above all, it's their sole source of accessible energy. In contrast, a Madagascan family can consume up to 100 kilos of charcoal per month. It's one of the main causes of deforestation on the island. Yet the forests are essential for the regulation of the climate. Wood is a crucial resource for the population. It's therefore difficult to limit its exploitation, for example, as a source of energy. In Madagascar, the production of charcoal is usually carried out as a side activity by peasants. They use rudimentary methods learned on the job, with a relatively low yield and much wastage of wood. Today, they've come for training to learn the secrets of improved carbonization. In parallel with the rationalization of traditional energies, the struggle against climate change demands the development of renewable energies. Africa has enormous potential in terms of solar, wind or hydraulic energy. In Madagascar, the potential of hydroelectric power alone is estimated at 1,000 megawatts. Exploiting it would contribute to the reduction of poverty in rural areas and would have no impact on the environment at all. With the support of the European Commission, the French NGO Fondation Énergie pour le Monde contributes to the establishment of electrification plans using renewable energies in rural areas. Almost 200 families have thus been connected to the electricity network in this rural area in the back of beyond. The electricity is supplied by a micro-hydroelectric plant installed on the banks of the river below the village. Before the craftsmen who come from this region left to live in Ambush in the city. Now they've all come back because they have the electricity they need for their production. For the Fondation Énergie pour le Monde, this model of rural electrification is particularly suited to developing countries because the financial cost and the environmental impact are so low compared to the benefits for the population. This is, in short, a sustainable model, which just goes to show that development and environmental requirements can be perfectly compatible.